All right, hey everyone, it's Wally Dallenbach, and this is uh, segment number three of repairing a cracked Vistalite drum. Uh, so if you kind of want to pick up on uh, number one, watch one, two, this is three, and uh, this is the buffing and polishing. And um, <clears throat> what I want to do first of all, this is the shell that I've been working on. Here's the crack. I've wet sanded the outside of the crack. I've wet sanded the inside of the, the shell, outside of the shell. I've wet sanded the bearing edges, top and bottom, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drape the drum over the camera, and this is kind of a preview, if you will, to the fourth segment where I'm going to actually just kind of, I'll, I'll do, I'll drape the drum over and it'll be in its finished state, and uh, we'll drop it in a box and ship her off. So segment four will be uh, packaging and shipping, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'll drape the drum over the camera and take a look at it. So there's the crack and you can see where it's been sanded <clears throat> and my gosh this drum is just beat to smithereens. You can see there there's the lug hole for the mini lugs. There's your um, mini clips. Now <clears throat> I don't know if you could see that but you might see, let's zoom in on it, you might see now I don't, I don't know that if that's crazy or if those are just little micro fractures from having the, um, the lug screw just way over tightened and I think that's how the shell got broken somebody probably really torqued up on the screwdriver <clears throat> and tightened those up really tight there's my, I'm living Ludwig people <laughs> they ought to just make me an endorser. Okay, so there's that. And you can see basically overall, <clears throat> you see how cloudy it is from wet sanding. And um, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. And I've actually kind of started to buff a little bit on the outside here. I don't know how well you can see it, but you might be able to see a little sheen. See that nice little shine in there? Okay, so now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a we'll set this here. I'm going to show you the products that I use. I don't use a Nuvo. I've not used it. Um, Mike, this, the owner of this drum, Schumacher, um, he, this is his drum. He bought some Nuvo. He bought a set and he's restoring it. And um, he sent this drum for me to repair, repair the crack. And um, he bought two sets of the Nuvo, and he's going to send me a set, and I'm going to use it to polish this drum. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting for it, I'm going to show you what I've used over my span of doing these things. Okay. Now, uh, for the home, for the home novice um, who's not really industrial, who just wants to basically maintain and care for your kit, what what you do is, um, of course, you mechanically inclined, you take yourself apart. And what I do is I use a five-inch buffer a 5 inch buffer. You can buy these at any home store, home remodeling store. Um, brand's not important. Let's not look at this. It's a 5 inch. Now the only thing is, is that when you buy a buffer like this, just make sure that they have plenty of replacement bonnets. Um, fine. You want to always use a fine, uh, clean, clean. Never set this thing down on anything. Never set it like this when you're buffing. Always set it on its side or have some kind of stand that you could set this on. <clears throat> and this is a... Um, this is your, it's a, a wool type of bonnet, okay, for finishing, and um, you can probably buy these at any hardware store. Now, just like I said, when you buy something like this, always make sure that they have replacement bonnets. Don't buy this from Home Depot because they do not support um, replacements. This is a 5-inch buffer, and they sell 7-inch replacement bonnets. You know, I talked to the manager about it, and I was like, you know, I talk to your purchasing people because they're making a big mistake. So um, it's not been corrected, and that was a year ago. Uh, so anyway, that's their problem. So don't go to Home Depot and buy this, okay? Now, <clears throat> so what you want to do, just for the home, um, you just you got a set of Ludwigs or Vista Lights or whatever, acrylic drums. You want to take them apart, clean them. Okay, my advice, get yourself one of these. Clean your shell up with some soap and water, hot soap and water, dry them off, and what you want to use is, is um, just as a medium, 
<clears throat> now, Romano Catone and RCI, um, I, I use this stuff right here. This is polish from RCI, formulated for acrylics, okay? Now, <clears throat> what this is, it's kind of it's kind of like furniture polish, um, but it's like wax and oil free and doesn't leave a residue. So this is your medium. So what you want to do is use a clean bonnet, use this as a medium, um, clean your drums up, soap and water, dry them, and uh, don't for, don't use any oil, um, alcohol or ammonia based products. Okay. So <clears throat> that's what we don't want to do. And then just this will this will shine your drums up nicely, and um, they're they're going to look like new. Okay. Now, people, I'm going to tell you right now, don't obsess over scratches in your drums, okay? Just accept it and, um, you know, go back and watch some previous videos that I've done. You know, it's an imperfect world. Just accept it for what it is. You don't want to create a bigger problem for yourself, okay? Um, just don't do that. Now, for big repairs and overhauls um, for things like this, <clears throat> here's what I've, I use is I use um, a combination of a, a kind of a medium grit um, buffing bonnet and turtle wax and uh, I've got 3M this is rubbing compound and it's called perfect it and uh, I went to the automotive dealer where I buy this from CarQuest or Napa and um, so they carry 3M buffing this is for um, buffing your car and uh, so let's see. It doesn't contain any silicone. In in what I've used it, it's it's shines your drums up nicely. So I just got back from Napa. They didn't have the, they didn't carry that anymore. So I bought this. It's silicone free. Just as the uh, um, the first bottle here. There's a, just a little bit more left in here. I don't have too much to go. And <clears throat> what I do is I mix this 50/50. So I've got the 3M. It's um, it's called 3M. Uh, Auto Advanced Rubbing Compound. There it is right there. I paid 12 bucks for this bottle and I mixed this 50% of this to 50% of this. Okay, and uh, you know, phew, there you go. So <clears throat> that's what I use. And I just, I get, and of course I use the wool bonnet. So I get mirror results out of this. The Nouveau stuff, I don't know how much it costs. I don't know about it. I've not used it. Um, two thumbs up to a friend of mine, Alan Walker, on Facebook. Man, the guy's phenomenal. He uses Nuvo. Um, he's a big drum restorer. I have a whole lot of respect for him. He does a beautiful job. And, um, you know, if you feel comfortable enough to send your drums to him, man, he's going to do a great job for you. But if you have a cracked shell, uh, you know, I'm, you want to talk to me, okay? I'll, I'll set you on the right path and I'll put you on a path where you can do it yourself. So with that, let's, let's give this a go and I'm going to show you how I do it. Oh, before I get going on this, I'm not going to bore you and let you watch me buff a shell. How boring. So, but what I'm going to do, um, I, I, I will advise this. What you don't want to do, you want to use, you what you want to do is you want to use a buffer that operates at a low RPM that doesn't cause heat through friction because when you cause heat through friction oh you're thinking well I'm gonna get behind a you know a big industrial buffer an upright vertical pedestal buffer with you know a, a 12 inch or an 18 inch buffing wheel and I'm gonna just shine these up till they shine like a mirror um, what you want to avoid or you know you're, I'm gonna get a buffing wheel for my bench grinder and I'm gonna you know start buffing this through my exploits of buffing shells, I've destroyed a lot of stuff, and what you don't want to do is cause a lot of um, high RPM, because what's, what's going to happen is you're going to cause instant heat, and you're going to just cut a gutter, and it's going to be like if you took a circular saw and just plowed a circular saw into your drum shell. It'll destroy it that quick, and uh, when you do it, you're going to just, your jaw's going to hit the floor, and you're going to go, I can't believe I was that stupid. Okay? so. You don't want to do that. You want to use a low RPM, and um, so with that, um, I've already kind of started to buff the bearing edges here, and they're really starting to look just choice. And I've, I've buffed a little bit on the outside of the crack, and um, boy, you know, uh, I think I advise you know using like 600 grit 
water and soap as a medium when you when you um, sand this. And I got to tell you, I'm looking down the plane of this, and this thing just it's shining like glass right now. And what I've used only is this um, this buffer, this compound, and just within a few minutes, you know. So what I do is I don't I don't put a whole lot of, of uh, medium on it, and I call this medium. And um, so let's go ahead and put this on. Now I think the Nuvo system, from what I've seen, it comes in three parts, and uh, you know it, it's it's probably like a process of, of of cutting and finishing and then polishing. That's my guess. So what I'm what I've tried to do is just do it all in a polishing um, type of a fashion. Now with this shell, there's some cuts and scratches on it, you know, and I, you know, watch segment two. Um, I kind of, I'm, I'm not worried about cuts and scratches, and don't you obsess about them either. It's an imperfect world. Wrap your head around it and just accept it. This is an instrument. It's to be played. It's to be used. Um, it's up to you. I, you know, I'm more concerned as a musician. I want to be a better drummer than worrying about how pretty of a drum set that I have. So don't get too hung up on the cosmetics of life. Um, it's kind of like having a beautiful girlfriend or a beautiful wife as a trophy. Um, don't make your drum set into a trophy because you're going to be afraid to use it. Okay? Maybe that's a bad analogy. I don't know. But you get it, right? Okay, so I've, I've put a few squirts of, of the compound 50-50 with the turtle wax. I dropped it. And uh, so we're going to go for it. Now, um, I've seen photographs of people that have like um, a, a seven inch, seven and a half inch, like a grinder that you hold with your hand and you use them maybe to like buff a boat or a big truck. You don't want to do that because how are you going to hang on to this and manage this drum? How are you going to hold this drum down? Those are the things you got to think about. How are you going to, how are you going to hold this drum down if you use a buffer like that? Um, you want you want to have as firm a grip as possible on this shell because you don't know what's going to happen if you put a big buffer on this. Um, you could torque this shell or bend this shell or twist this shell, putting a big buffer on it, and you just you'll break this thing to smithereens, and you won't even know what happened until you look on the floor and see your shell in bits and pieces. So, people, I'm telling you right now, for the home novice, I'm giving you the best advice, the best instruction that I know how. And I'm applying the, the several years of experience that I have, and I'm giving it to you for free. So don't poo-poo it, don't shove it aside and think you know better, because trust me, I've destroyed shells, okay? <laughs> and I don't want you to have to. Now, so here we go. Got the medium on, got my buffer, going to start it up. You're going to get a little bit messy. You're going to get your trousers messy. Um, I'm on my back patio here in Indiana, and... Uh, this is kind of the brown bottle section of the project, so uh, we're going to go ahead and hit the go switch. I'm going to make sure that I have this shell firmly in my hand, and um, so let's give her a go. All right, I'm still able to talk and um, buffing away. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of I'm going to go around the shell, and I'm going to give it just a thorough cleaning. The only thing that I've really polished so far is just I've polished all the um, the wet sanding out of the top of the crack. All right. Now tomorrow, what I'm going to do is um, now I'm coming up around the badge. And what I do when I come up around the badge is I put my two fingers over the corners. I don't want to plow and do it with my buffer, and I just kind of protect the badge that way. I don't put the buffing bonnet over over the badge. I just kind of buff around it. I don't want to buff on the badge. You can probably put tape on it um, as a protector, but that's no guarantee that you won't run your buffer, your buffer won't get caught in your corners of your badges. And man, this thing is just shining up real nice. Now, it's important for you when you're doing this that you, like I mentioned earlier, don't set your buffer down on the ground. Don't set it on something. Always set your, your bonnet. Uh, your buffer on its side so that your bonnet's not getting contaminated, okay? So uh, that's what you don't want to do. Now right now, I've, I've cleaned this shell prior uh, with a little bit of soap and water when I had it in my sink on uh, the second video. And 
I'm just kind of going around it consistently. I'm not pressing down. You know, that's kind of one of the things uh, you need to keep in mind. You know, I took shop class when I was in high school, and I had my shop instructor was teaching us how to use um, a hacksaw. And he says, you know, let the saw do the work. You don't have to sit there and put all your weight into it and muscle and, uh, you know, here's how to hold your saw and here's how to cut. And that's, you want to apply that same thing here. Just hold your, it's like drumming, everything is kind of like a touch. It's how you touch your feel, your sense of feel. And you want to apply that same thing here. It's, uh, you don't want to plow into this, you want to let the buffer and your medium do the work. And, um, and that's about it. So, going around this thing, and what I'm going to do is go around this thing a few times, and what, I, what I'll eventually do, okay, so um, I introduced this medium to you. This is kind of what I use, and I said 50-50. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from this bonnet, and I'm going to switch to a finishing bonnet, where I'm just going to use the wax, okay? And finally, so I'm going to wax it with this, and then what I'm going to do when I start assembling, I'm going to switch over here to my RCI polish. Okay, now Romano Catone at RCI swears by this polish, and we, we've had in-depth conversations about this polish. And um, he swears by it, and I swear by it. So if, um, for those of you that are acrylic shells, shell lovers and want to take good care of your shells, this stuff is the bomb. Um, it cleans and it shines and it got it just it's a great product okay so with that um, my next I'm going to do I guess another video here and uh, it'll be about polishing and shipping and I'll show you the finished product oh, oh gosh so the bearing edges I kind of skipped that so I, I sanded the bearing edges wet sanded the, in number two second video and it's the same thing so what I do here is uh, I'm going to put some medium on this. I'm not going to put a whole bunch. And uh, just to kind of keep from spritzing myself with a bunch of overspray, what I do is I'm going to just kind of rub it into the, count, uh, the buffing bonnet here. And I'm going to rub a little bit over the top of the bearing edge. And once again, you want to hang on to this thing, okay? And just kind of go around my bearing edge like so. You don't want to press down. You don't want to muscle it. You just let the let the uh, buffer glide. And any anybody can do this, you know. Just be sure that you're in a safe environment. Um, you know, it, it would be it would be smart for you to have some kind of carpet in case this thing got away from you and fell. Um, you know, always consider your surroundings. This is just uh, it's a summertime project. I'm outside. I'm having a good time. Um, I'm confident. And uh, I have faith in my skills. And really, if you just go around this thing, I mean, you can go around it all day for all I care. The more you go around it, the shinier it's going to get. But <clears throat> how you can tell is... Um, when you start, when you put your rubbing compound, your medium on it, it'll look wet. You know, it'll kind of look like you're smearing around bacon grease on it. But after a while, the, the compound kind of starts to um, dry up and start to do its job. And all buffing is, what you're doing is you're rearranging the molecules on the surface. Okay, so if you have like a scratch, and we talked about scratches, you know, don't get too hung up on scratches. This is the best thing you could do for a stretch. Don't wet sand it. Just do this. Take it, buff it. Don't get a, don't worry about getting rid of that scratch, you know? Buff it like this and do the best you can. You're not gonna buff it out. You'll you'll make it so it's not like scratchy or has burrs on it. But you know what? Buff it a little bit and celebrate that scratch as a road scar and um, like a notch in your post to your experience as a drummer. You know, don't don't be ashamed of, of scratches on your kit, you know? That's just uh, that's just how it is. Now this thing is really starting to shine like glass. And just within the, the minute or so that I've been talking to you, showing you this, okay, 
God darn, look at that. And and all this was, it was like 600 grit wet sanding. And I went around this shell probably 10 times with just a little bit of dish soap and some water. And I'm gonna close out this video. I'll go around this top and um, until I'm satisfied with it. And I'm gonna give you a shot of this bearing edge. Now, like I said, when you do a project like this, gosh darn it, man, don't, don't think you're going to get this all done in a day because you're not. This is a big project, and um, the, way, the way you approach doing something like this um, is going to be a testament to how well this turns out when it's all done, okay? Go and do it like a bull in a china shop, who knows what's going to happen. All right, now before I drape this over the camera and close out the video, I'm gonna emphasize right now, uh, where I, I might have emphasized before just lightly, there are people who will say that they're experts, okay, or pros or whatever, okay? Now, um, and they'll say, you know, I'll do that for you, but you, you wanna be careful, unless you could see like a portfolio or examples of their work, you know, I'll quote again, and I think I did this in video number one, Tyler Durden in the movie Fight Club, just shoving feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken, and in the same respect, just because you own the tools does not make you a professional, okay? So be leery of people who call themselves professionals, all right? Um, through this video series, what I'm trying to do for you is give you the tools and the knowledge that you need to at least be an informed consumer, okay? And, and that's what it's all about. Um, once again, we're a drumming community. We should kind of be looking out for each other, taking care of each other. And, uh, you know, this is just one of the things. Mike Schumacher, he's a friend of mine on Facebook. Um, I, I got a lot of respect for him. He's a retired military man. I'm going to take care of him. I'm a retired vet. And uh, to me, it's a brotherhood. So I'm going to look out for him. I'm going to take care of him the best I can. So with that, once again, just follow these simple rules. This is the third video installment of repairing the shell. And um, I'll show you right now the, the, uh, the bearing edge, man. It's really pretty cool, all right? So let me get here on the other side of the video camera so I can see the, maybe see. I don't know how well you could see that shine on there. Pretty nice though, right? Look at that. And that was wet sanded with 400 grit. Kind of shaking the camera, sorry about that. Sweet. All right, so everyone, be cool. It's still Saturday, day number two of this project. Um, I'm moving into the, uh, going to try to follow my own advice from video number two about getting out and barbecuing and spending time with some loved ones. So, and I'm going to start drinking some brewskis. All right, so everybody be cool. Thanks for watching. Take care, drum, practice, and, you know, play your kit and, and bang the heck out of it, right? They're your drums. Play them hard. Write them hard and put them away wet, right? All right, until next time, everybody, I'm Livin' Ludwig. There you go. Everybody, peace.